Odeon Paradise. Can, can you give us um, Odeon Paradise? Can you give us um, um, a sort of a, a synopsis of what the play is about? Well, this is the subject of the great unpublished novel, which I now call Boxo Novel, mm -hmm. which I've been trying to get to for many years. Mm -hmm. But it was a play about eight tourists who go down to Jamaica for a one-week package deal mm -hmm. and everything that happens to them. And it was the precursor of a lot of American films. A lot of American filmmakers saw that. There was a shoot going on when we did this thing, and they hired all of the actors nice. to do the shoot. Like, they just... Yeah. And we had... 20 tons of sand past me. I mean, I was very, very fed. You know, I, I, I didn't know how to write a play. Mm. I knew how to improvise a play. Mm. So I had 17 pages, brought them to Clark Rogers, and he dramaturged them into a two-act play. Mm -hmm. And then we had this fantastic um, set, which was paper flowers, sometimes made by volunteers, and 20 tons of sand. Mm -hmm. And we even had a grotto. Hmm. And we even had things like, which I'm always trying to get people to do, if we did it at the coldest time of the year, if you showed up in a bathing suit, you got in free. Hmm. So there were always a few people in bathing suits at the front of the thing. Oh it, was, it was, again, a community experience or a part of the street life. Um, the people who had stores on Queen Street were asked to do uh, displays based on the play. And so they had sort of Ken dolls as the characters and sand and, 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 and palm trees. Mm -hmm. It was also part of a certain time in, in Canada where in Toronto, where there was a huge Jamaican influx. That's right. I don't think Bob Marley was still alive, but he was still, you know. And so we filled the theater with paper flowers and with sand and with colored lights. Mm -hmm. And did this play, and it was it was a, a huge hit. It was mm -hmm. really fun, and it wasn't a one-person show. So, and I had actually written it with my then boyfriend Patrick mm. Brimer. Right. There's a lot of boyfriends in this story. Anyway. <laughs> well, uh, what other boyfriends did you have? I'm sorry. Is there no, a no, we're not going into that anymore. Mm -hmm. okay. So, what happened the second time round when I was in New York? I did one play at the Public Theater. Mm -hmm. Was that. Um, I don't think it's a surprise that people in theater sleep with each other and sometimes do drugs and drink a lot. What? I don't think we're going to go, oh my God. Oh what? my God. Um, so the play was a party. Mm -hmm. It was about people partying in this beautiful atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And certainly ganja is smoked when mm -hmm. people go to Jamaica. Absolutely. And there was probably some drugs around the theater. But mm -hmm. on stage, they were smoking strawberry tea. Okay. And um, we know there was a battle between the alternate theaters and the then um, star critic. And she found our work to be primitive, and if only we studied the classics more, and she just didn't get what was going on. She was from the States, I think, via mm -hmm. England. Mm -hmm. And a lot of battles went on there, and a lot of bravado and things that shouldn't have been said. Now you're just quiet, you don't say anything. But there was a kind of... You know, you know, come on, you know, you're from outside, we'll, we'll, we'll take a look at this. This is, this is not, this is something new. Mm -hmm. This is not something unaccomplished. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so, uh, the strawberry tea <laughs> smells exactly like marijuana. How would I know? I don't know. I won't. And what happened was, is uh, she spoke to the then entertainment editor, and said that people were smoking real dope on the stage, real marijuana on the stage. And that was put in the Toronto Star, right. which is essentially accusing us of a criminal act. Mm -hmm. And then the police came into the theater. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, you know, we showed them strawberry tea. That was what was being rolled. The stage mm -hmm. manager rolled the spliffs for the, for mm -hmm. the show. Yeah. And, um, and the theater sued. And the lawyer who worked for the theater, for Pasmarai, later on said it was kind of a, 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 a famous case because the lawyer for the star remembers sitting in his you know, high Bay Street office with a spliff made of strawberry tea, <laughs> smoking it in his office to try and see what it smelled like. Right, right. And we had the strawberry tea benefit because what the other theaters realized mm -hmm. was if, if on no proof the star was going to write, there was no proof, there was nothing. Yeah. 
smelt like drugs, like, like marijuana and so, right? So there was no proof and the police never found any proof. Mm -hmm. So if they were going to start doing that, everybody was in trouble. So it was a big benefit, but it, in many ways it stuck. The play didn't suffer at all. The play mm -hmm. was sold out, everybody came. Right. But the stigma stuck and Pazmarai did sue and it was settled out of court. And I wished we'd had the muscle and the money to really have right. made the point. Right. It's because it sort of dribbled away. Mm -hmm. And uh, with what, whatever it was to pay our costs, there mm -hmm. was nothing. And yet the actors were being accused, actually. So they, the actors were all interviewed. Mm -hmm. And with the lawyer, and the lawyer would say, um, so you weren't uh, smoking real, real marijuana? No. How would you know real marijuana? <laughs> you know, like, what are we pretending here? Mm -hmm. We're pretending that, you know, in mm -hmm. that culture at that time, this was not common, you know? Yeah. Like, how did he know? Well, mm -hmm. so they were all interviewed, quite scary. Hmm. Um, but it was a blow. It was just at a time when things were starting to get normal. Mm -hmm. It was at a time when this whole idea of the theaters being alternate to the mainstream culture was changing. The mainstream culture was becoming more conservative. Mm -hmm. And so the theaters had to be more conservative. Right. And we were kind of still out on this limb of still doing things like ad hoc, like an actor would show up and we'd all, you know, without money for the phone bill. Mm -hmm. And we'd take, take much, you know, give them money for the phone bill. You know, mm -hmm. there was a sense of community. a community center. Yeah. And, and this stuck, and it sticks to this day. Hmm. This sense of uh, that to be outside the norm is to be criminal, mm -hmm. and to be um, irresponsible, mm -hmm. and, um, and to be uh, just plain silly. Mm -hmm. And it had its effect. It, it, you can't help things go us and them. And with my natural sense against institutionalized anything, I defined myself mm -hmm. on one side of that mm -hmm. and continued to. Mm -hmm. And I realized that's as deep in me as anything. Mm -hmm. The idea to counter something. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, sometimes you lose and sometimes you get painted. So no one else ever did Odie on Paradise, for instance. Right. I was not named in the lawsuit because I wasn't on stage smoking strawberry tea. Right. But no one ever did the play, hmm. which was, you know, proven itself in two productions. It's and, a great script. Yeah. It's a really great script. I uh, Thank you. Yeah. But, and then all of a sudden, when I started to do other plays, it was like the, 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 the nice clean girl that had done Maggie and Pierre had disappeared, mm. or it was still there, around. Mm -hmm. And this other person was there mm -hmm. who had this stigma, mm -hmm. which I have to embrace. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. So there was, there was a real cost to that, that the people involved with the star never paid. Right. Um, and even though we essentially won, they gave us money, they settled mm -hmm. out of court, the point was never made. Mm -hmm. And so, and I do believe that's had repercussion in an echo, a ripple effect, that it's very hard to pin down. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. and, um, and it was real war. It was real war. Mm 